It is so nice to have each and every one of you here this morning. Um, <clears throat> this morning's theme for the praise team is uh, rain, Jesus reigns. And so if you'll stand with us, we're going to sing the song, Lord, reign in me.
job. This next song is called God Who Is. someone here to Jasper Bible Church.
Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to Jasper Bible Church. So glad that you're all here this morning on a beautiful day. And would like to ask the ushers if they would hand out the Ministry of Friendship books. And as they are doing so, if you will send that book uh, down the line there. And uh, uh, if you are visiting with us, we welcome you to sign the book along with everyone else. And that will give us record of your attendance with us today. Then send that book back the other direction, if you will, opened up and it will help you to get better acquainted with those who are seated in your row. A few things to mention. First of all, a big thank you for the many who showed up for yesterday's work day. Much got accomplished, and thank you so much to each one. Also, at the conclusion of our service this morning will be a baptismal. Each of these have received Jesus as their Savior, and as they're being baptized, they're identifying themselves as Christians with Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we continue our study in the book of Luke, looking at the subject of characteristics of a true disciple. Uh, tomorrow night at 6.30, college and career, uh, supper and Bible study at our place. Also, Young at Heart, this Thursday is your activity. You'll notice on both bulletin boards the sign-up sheets, and if you can sign up for that, and also Roger Emmons will be in the... Uh, foyer and uh, what they're doing is because it's a supper and they want just uh, one check from the church uh, they're paying in advance for that and just write if it's a check right out to the church then there'll be one lump sum uh, for the Essen House uh, restaurant also next Sunday after the morning service the teens will have lunch followed by grocery grocery delivery with the rack ministry and you will see information in the bulletin what that's all about one week from tonight is praise night if you have a song you'd like to sing, an instrument you'd like to play, a poem you'd like to read, whatever, connect with me after the service this morning so I can get you signed up for that. You'll notice an insert as far as the mother-daughter uh, salad night, and there's sign-up sheets for that as well. If you'll sign up for that even this morning, that will help them to know how to plan. We have a children's dedication coming up in a couple of weeks. For those who are interested in that, connect with me, if you will, after the service. And next Sunday after the morning service, there'll be a brief, no more than 10-minute uh, meeting with those who will be participating in the dedication. You'll also see the information on Dan and Gina Helmanak's uh, missionary trip. You'll be noticing that uh, uh, Emily Helmanak will be going along with them on that trip. Also, uh, as you know, we have been uh, go are starting now in the New Testament book of James on Sunday morning. And for as many as will do, um, if you will read through the book of James several times, especially chapter 1 right now, as we're going through this study, you'll get much, much more out of it. Also, to uh, share with you a card from my dad, who uh, had back surgery this past Tuesday. It says, uh, thank you to all of uh, the church family for your many prayers uh, for my back surgery on uh, Tuesday, April 14th at St. Luke's in Toledo. It says, thank you for the lovely flowers from the church. And... Uh, for Reverend Bruce Jewett and Carolyn Johnson and Larry Keck for driving me to and from the hospital and wonderful wife Pat for her love and care and pray that I can be at church next Sunday, April 26th, on my 83rd birthday. So a uh, note from Dad and just to let you know about that. In a couple of moments I will be sharing with you as far as some prayer requests, but one thing I would like to share with you uh, and that is a Columbia researcher has found that the average person makes about 70 decisions each day. 70 decisions per day. Doing the math, that would be 25,500 decisions every year. And in 70 years, that would be a total of 1,788,500 decisions. And 20th century philosopher Albert Camus said, life is a sum of all your choices. Got to tell you for a second about the biggest decision that you will ever make. This is the biggest. By far, the decision determines where you will spend eternity. Do you know what's going to happen to you after this life here is done? Are you absolutely sure, based on God's word, that heaven will be your eternal home? Now, when I ask you that question, you might say, well, I, I, I hope so. I'd like to think so. I want to tell you from the Bible how you can know so. The Bible says these things are written so you can know that you have eternal life. Here's the thing. There's not a one of us that are perfect, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus came to this earth 
2,000 years ago for the purpose of dying on the cross in our place for our sins. When Jesus was crucified, he put upon himself the punishment that we deserved for our sin. And he didn't stay dead, but he came back to life again. And he offers one way to heaven, and it's through receiving him and his death on the cross as payment for our sins. You say, well, that's nice, but how do you go about receiving this gift? Indeed, it is a gift. It's as simple as saying, Lord, I admit that I've sinned. I believe that you died on the, Jesus died on the cross for me and came back to life again, and I receive you as my Savior. I re- receive this gift of salvation. See, well, it sounds too simple. Well, we couldn't do it on our own. That's why Jesus did the work for us. Otherwise, believe me, he wouldn't have gone through all the torture of the cross if there was any other way. That is the most important decision you will ever make by far. And right now you have a decision to make. For you who have already placed your faith and trust in Jesus, you can be praying for those who need to make that decision. But for those who aren't absolutely sure that heaven will be your eternal home, the great news is you can make that decision right where you're seated right now because God knows your thoughts and he knows the sincerity of your heart. If you'll bow your heads for just a moment. If you'd like to make that decision, you can simply follow along with me, if you will, in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned and that I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And then he came back to life again. So I received Jesus as my Savior. I invite him into my life to forgive my sins so I can go to heaven someday. Lord, you know those who sincerely prayed that prayer with me, and please give them the courage to Share that with me after the service this morning. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As the ushers are coming up for this morning's offering, I would like to share with you a couple of uh, prayer requests. Continue to be praying for my dad as he recuperates. Bill Bockert and health needs that he has. I know he would appreciate your prayers. Michelle Eno as she recuperates from surgery. And uh, Kevin and Deb Keller's uh, daughter, Amanda, recuperating from a uh, second eye surgery, and she's about seven and a half months along, continue to be praying uh, for um, Amanda, but made it through, baby made it through, and continue to be praying, if you will, that this time the surgery will accomplish everything it needs to, and I know there were many others that we were praying for in our Sunday school hour, but we'll have prayer for this morning's offering, and Lori has the offertory special for us, and this time, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you that you're the great God that we serve, that you hear and answer our prayers. And we think of my dad, Bill Bockert, uh, Dan Van Valkenburg, uh, Michelle Eno, uh, Amanda, and uh, so many others that we've been praying for in our Sunday school hour. And I just pray that you would meet each and every health need. Thank you for our country. That you give wisdom and guidance to those that govern over us. You protect and encourage our military and their families. I ask your blessing upon today's service that with the message and the music, each part that it would give honor and glory to you. And I ask your blessing now upon this morning's offering, thanking you for the privilege that we have to give back to you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Turn in your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, page 1196. 1196. James chapter 1. And in a few moments we'll be looking at verses 9 through 12 in a message entitled, Pursue what doesn't wither. Pursue what doesn't wither. Well, yesterday I was reminded that spring has finally sprung. What a beautiful day indeed it was. And spring is often a time for spring cleaning. Spring is that time that often means that you get reacquainted with your attic. And you open up the sealed boxes in your attic to be reminded of the stuff that you don't use. Yet stuff that is so important that it has yet to be tossed out. Well, I found them again. Boxes that were sealed up, but boxes of my... Many, dusty, partially broken table tennis trophies. Yes, boxes like this in a staples box to protect my long cherished table tennis trophies. So heavy the trophies are, I couldn't even put them back. You see, as a young kid, between fifth grade and ninth grade, I became a table tennis junkie. What happened is I learned the hand-eye coordination, the spins and the spikes, and I traveled around, if I do say so myself, conquered in the Michigan and Ohio state tournaments. I was so proud of my trophies as they would increasingly clutter the dresser in my room. But now, what has become of the trophies? Well, here's one. The arm's broken off. The paddle has about had it. Here's another one where the guy fell off. Some faded ribbons. Here's another one. He's not even holding a paddle. He doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. The 1976, you can't tell, looks like 1910. I'm old, but not that old. And I look at that, and these used to be the pride and joy of my life. It was through these trophies that somehow, in a weird way, I got some self-worth within my life. But I don't have the heart to throw them away. I guess what has happened is so much time and energy was spent into the competition to winning those trophies. But now, what good are they? Just breaking more and more each year, stored away in boxes, taking up space in the attic. Isn't it amazing how something that once was so important now simply is included in the boxes of junk? It serves as a reminder not to pursue what withers. And that's what James emphasizes here in chapter 1 in verses 9 through 12. He encourages us that our pride, our purpose, and our promise are all to be found in things of eternal value. First of all, he mentions to us that our pride is found in our position. Now, what kind of position is he referring to? Our ranking in the U.S. TTA? United States Table Tennis Association, in case you were wondering. Or maybe the ranking that we have at school. Homecoming Queen. 
National Honor Society. Or maybe the ranking that we have at work. Foreman, supervisor, or even weirdly, if we would call it as such, at church. Superintendent, deacon. What kind of position is being referred to here? Actually, it's our pride is found in our position in Christ. Notice, first of all, if you're poor, you're to remember that you're rich. Notice what it says here in verse 9. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. Now keep in mind here that our Lord Jesus Christ and also James, the author of this New Testament book of James, who is the eldest son and first biological son of both Joseph and Mary the second in line to Jesus in the family, that this family grew up in poverty. Now, how do we know this? Well, when you study the sacrifice that was given at the temple when Jesus was born, it's a sacrifice given from someone who is dirt poor. They grew up in the low-income section of Nazareth. Yet they were rich. Why? Because they had godly parents. And they had a priceless relationship with the Father. How about you? Are you poor? Are you so poor that you'd have to get a loan to buy a stick of gum? Are you so poor that the kind of car you drive would be considered a Classic antique, if it weren't for all the rust and over 200,000 miles on it. How about the paycheck? Do you have more days at the end of the month than you do money at the end of the month? If the person that you're looking at in your mirror is someone who's not wealthy at all, you have a choice to make. You can either despise that one and shame that person that's staring back at you, or you can see yourself as a child of the king who has a future heavenly inheritance to look forward to. If your job is being an assistant to the assistant's assistant, I want you to realize that we have the privilege of being ambassadors for Christ. That if you come from a dysfunctional family, by the way, is there such thing as a functional one? If you come from a dysfunctional family, I want you to know that you have a father who is financially and emotionally secure. You hear a lot these days about self-esteem, self-image. Self-actualization versus a low self-esteem. But if we will simply see ourselves as God sees us, the self-esteem simply comes along for the ride. If you see yourself as someone who is a sinner who deserves to burn in hell forever, yet that God loves so much that he not only saved, but equipped with spiritual gifts to serve him, if you have that combination in your head, then this self-esteem issue comes along for the ride. The challenge is to pursue what doesn't wither. Now, if you're rich, see me after the, no. If you're rich, then you need to remember that you're poor. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, notice the next verse. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wild flower. Whatever trophies that you will accumulate, whether in the state of Michigan or in the state of Ohio, they're very, very soon going to be of little value. By the way, 
Couldn't believe this. Do you know how much money that the Apple's founder, Steve Jobs, left? You know how much money he left? All of it. And so will you. And I will as well. Because you mark it down, I've yet to see a hearse pull along a U-Haul trailer. You leave it when you go. And therefore, we need to pursue what does not wither. Financial wealth, it's fleeting. Now, for some, maybe you remember a time when you had some money and bad circumstances has happened, and now you're living paycheck to paycheck. Or sometimes you realize how poor you are when you realize that the money that you do have cannot fix your health, and it cannot fix your relationships, and no amount of money that you have can do anything to lessen your need of God's forgiveness and his guidance. So no matter what your earthly status is, whether your position is poverty or prosperity, our pride is found in our position in Christ. But also notice, secondly, that our purpose is found in our passing. Notice verse 11. It says, For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. When you realize that you live life with one foot in the grave, when you realize that even 80 or 90 years on this earth is like a moment compared to eternity, then you'll understand life's purpose, which is to pursue what doesn't wither. Most of those trophies, by the way, are either chipped, cracked, or broken. Every year it gets worse. No matter how much scotch tape or duct tape that you try to use, you can't hold the paddle on the guy's hand, you can't keep the guy on top of the trophy, and you can't keep the ribbons from fading. And something else I realized, past ping pong player has never appeared on my resume. Boy, who should we hire? I think we should hire Bruce. You know, he's a past ping pong player. It, it never really was an issue, you see. And the only person who seems to want my autograph is the check taker from Consumers Energy. Fame is fleeting, or for me, non-existent. Maybe the same for you. And therefore, I don't care how popular you are, the weather will determine how many people show up for your funeral. That's how it works. Pursue what does not wither. We see a third thing, and that is that our promise is found in our perseverance. Notice this meaty verse in verse 12. First of all, it says blessed. In other words, joyful, Regardless of circumstance, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Did you notice the conditions here to this promise of reward? First of all, it requires a time of testing. It says, under trial. Those of you who have received your high school diploma, you know that there are tests to take before it happens. There are tests to take before you enter into college. There are tests to take during that time. One test after another, it seems, and so it is, it seems, in the Christian life. A second thing that we see, and that is that it requires time for testing. It says, because when he has stood the test... Standing the test. 
it implies a time of difficulty. A time when you have a lot of questions, but you don't seem to be getting answers from God. A time when you're asking for God's help, but it doesn't seem as though he is helping at all. I can pretty much guarantee you that the time of testing will be longer than you want it to be, and it will seem more severe than you thought it would be, and usually it involves and includes something that withers a cancerous body, an empty checking account, a severed relationship, a disappearing job. And as we look at this, we realize that if we ask God to help us focus on that of eternal value, to focus on our eternal life in heaven, to focus on the salvation of our relatives and friends, to focus on our closer fellowship with him, to focus on the eternal reward that we will receive one day, that this will help us to stand the test and to look forward to that day where you see in verse 12, we will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The word crown, it's the Greek word stephanos. We get the word Stephen or the name Stephanie from that. The stephanos crown, a laurel wreath that one would place upon the head. Look like a smaller Christmas wreath plopped on the head. And there were three different occasions why people would receive a Stephanos crown. First of all, it was worn at weddings to symbolize joy. And no matter how saddened you are by the trial that you're going through, if Jesus is your Savior, one day you'll have joy. Secondly, this crown was given to kings to indicate royalty. I don't care how poor you are or the difficult situation you find yourself in, one day if you know Christ, you'll be reigning with him, it says in the book of Revelation. Also, it was given to those in the Isthmian Games, similar to our Olympics, who would receive a crown for being victorious in the race that they would run. But life on this earth isn't easy, is it? You remember the first time that you ever took your car through an automatic car wash? It was a panic time for me. First of all, you inch your way up there not knowing what to expect. And then you have to put your money in this little thingamajig. And you hope to get the right amount. And then what happens is you check and recheck your windows. And then when you recheck it, you didn't realize it, but you rolled it down a bit, so now you've got to put it back up. You think you're all set. And then you put your car on this thing that moves. And you read the sign, and it says, put your car in neutral so that you do. And you're fine until it all starts up. And all of a sudden, circumstances are happening beyond your control, and your car is moving, and you really don't have any say about it. And storms are coming everywhere. Water, soap, splash, brushes, and you're trapped inside your car. And the thing that comes, well, probably only me, the thing that came to my mind is, what would happen if I couldn't get out of here? What would happen if water started coming into this car? And I'm going through this torture, which seems longer than it should be. But then what happened is things started to die down. And my dried car propelled out into the world once again, cleaner and even shinier than it was before. Until I drive one mile down the dirt road I live on. Life is like that. 
There are stormy times when things seem out of control. There are times that you go through a car wash experience and it seems out of control even though God has everything under control. You just don't see it as he sees it. And someday the race will be won. Someday the race will be over. And someday there is that crown of life. And here's the question. What are you pursuing? May it be that in your life you are pursuing things of eternal value. Do not enter eternity with a bunch of broken trophies in your attic. Pursue what doesn't wither. Pursue what will actually make a difference when life on this earth is done. Because let's face it, folks, everything else is meaningless. When the time comes when our eternity has begun, it won't make a difference what kind of a car you drove. It won't make a difference what kind of a house you lived in, the kind of clothes that you wore. What will make a difference is that you've received Jesus as your Savior and as you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ, how you have lived your life for him. Pursue what doesn't wither. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for God's word. I just pray that you would convict us, challenge us, and encourage us with this truth. And may the lives that we live be that which honor and glorify you, because we aren't thinking of the here and now, which withers, but that is which is of eternal value. And I ask your blessing now upon this baptismal time. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This time, those who are going to get baptized, if you will go back and get ready for that, those who are helping with that, if you'll go ahead and do so. I'm going to be getting back there, and praise team, if you'll come up and lead us in some hymns until we get ready. And uh, we have a couple of guys that are going to help in moving this. And uh, hey, watch those trophies, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Pulpit, that's okay. Um, if you will take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 378. That's hymn number 378. We're going to sing the song, um, Stand Up for Jesus. And this is the oldest joke in the book, but you can't sing this song sitting down. So let's stand up and sing, stand up for Jesus, okay?
may be seated. The next song we're going to sing is, um, is it Turn Your Eyes? Oh, okay. Um, the next song we're going to sing is Are You Washed in the Blood, which is hymn number 208. <clears throat> hymn number 208, Are You Washed in the Blood? You took too long back there. You guys can't get it together. We're going to switch it out. <laughs> Actually, I really wanted to sing this song first, so turn your eyes upon Jesus. There we go. All right. Okay, so we're going to sing. I can't, I can't play and sing at the same time, or whatever. Um, so we're going to sing the verse of this a little faster and the chorus a little slower, okay? So here we go. Each of these have received Jesus as their Savior and are identifying themselves as Christians this morning. This is Carol Judkins. Carol, have you received Jesus as your Savior? I have. Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
This is Beverly Pawson. Beverly, have you received Jesus as your Savior? I have. Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Tim Judkins. Tim, have you received Jesus as your Savior? Yes, I have. Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Brad Miller. Brad, have you received Jesus as your Savior? I have. Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Leah Helmanak. Leah, have you received Jesus as your Savior? Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> This is Riley Helmanek. Riley, have you received Jesus as your Savior? Upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The praise team will come back up and lead us in a closing chorus. The chorus, Forever Reign. What a privilege it is to know Jesus as our Savior, to have our sins forgiven, a privilege to identify ourselves as believers. What a great time it is, too, to know that even though we go through trials and difficulties that we face, that we have God with us, one day there'll be this great reward, the crown of life. And what a blessing it is to have him with us every step of the way. We'll sing the closing chorus, Forever Rain, and then Rick will close our service in prayer. Let's stand as we sing, please.
God, you are so good. I thank you so much for all your blessings. I thank you that the treasures that we should be uh, paying attention to are the treasures in heaven and not the things of this earth because the things of this earth will, will go away and never be there again, but our treasures are in heaven. And I thank you for all the many that uh, were baptized this morning too, that your blessings would be upon them. Help them to grow and to grow closer to you and to know you better and then to tell others how important it is to know Jesus. We thank you so much for all that you do. I pray now as we leave here that you give us a blessing, give us strength, and encourage us each day. And I thank you for all that you do. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are dismissed.